Hey everyone, my name is Root and we are here. This is going to be week number two of the NCP Nimbus Division and we are up against Matt O'Shea and his Montreal Milotics. Now, this is a really, really scary matchup because uh, I watched his uh, week one matchup and Clefable just set up Cosmic Powers and completely destroyed for five KOs. Um, but at the same time, he has a set up Como, which is super duper scary. He has a Snorlax, which I know he kind of loves his Snorlax. And um, Curse Lax is really scary against my team in particular but also just um a couple of things that i noticed from we won uh, primarily the vicavolt it was a max defense vicavolt which uh i'm a huge fan of but it was max defense vicavolt with uh turn one webs so that i was incredibly scared of and i really tried to see if i could build a way around getting sticky webbed turn one because uh sticky webs really kind of hurt my team a little bit um so what I came up with a really interesting Copperaja that I thought could kind of deal with it. And um, fun fact, I found out that max speed Copperaja, max speed adamant Copperaja, still has enough speed to outspeed no speed Clefable. So I was really happy about that. And uh, Matt's team is remarkably slow. So I kind of felt confident enough that max speed Copperaja could outspeed the things that I would need to and uh I could have a decent time with my Gaparaja here um even if it is banded and banded kind of did limit my options quite a bit but turn one heat crash against Vigavolt should KO and the only way that I do it the only way that I do it not even life orb could do it um was choice banded heat crash against that Vigavolt but then um also just heavy slam was super strong against the clefable but not very strong against the snorlax which is why i also have the iron head which does significantly more damage to, to snorlax but that's exactly what i mean when i'm saying it's it's limiting my options because i can't just choice into heavy slam and deal with both uh snorlax and the clefable if they are both um healthy and then as kind of a backup answer to that snorlax i also have the malamar there which can potentially super power up and win some games right so malamar was kind of intended to be a little bit of a soft um deterrent for setting up webs but also this team is slow enough where i just felt like it could win this game on its own it has a lumberry so it can't get like toxic cheese or anything like that i've really felt like it had a solid matchup as long as uh, certain things were weakened obviously it was never gonna be too too easy so i had to set things up well enough such that um it, i could do what i needed to do but I thought it was really interesting here. And uh, Scarf Sylveon, I thought was really interesting here. Uh, again, he has a very slow team, but the but the very few things that are faster, uh, Sylveon deals with really well. Like, I had no answers for a solid Como build. And this is going to be my, my solid answer for a Como build, right? Dragapult here was, was pretty interesting. Uh, I, I actually had Spooky Plate on it originally, but I don't think Spooky Plate is in the game right now. So I ended up just looking for whatever I could find in my bag. And the best thing that I could find was a Scope Lens. So maybe we get some crits off in this this game but um ultimately shadow ball was super duper spammable against his entire team but throughout the entire building process i was thinking about how i could work around a bulletproof coma -o. and um i just have draco right so like i don't generally like to play in a way that makes me that forces me into clicking draco and then weakening myself and then giving him momentum but it felt it made sense it made a lot of sense here right so if the label comes in on a draco then i can u turn out i can get some better matchups but ultimately shadow ball felt super spammable so i really did want the uh spooky play on honestly i probably could have just put on a spell tag and it would have been fine but oh well it, it's gonna be what it is again bulletproof coma o was always gonna be an issue here so uh other than that I have a max defensive flame orb Milotic, which I thought matched up super solidly here. And an Arcanine, which was kind of the sixth mon on this team. I really didn't know what I wanted to do in this matchup with my sixth mon. But Arcanine felt as good of a kind of pivot as anything else. I felt like it can spread around some toxics. It can kind of be a bulky um, pain in Matt's plans. And ultimately, like, I, like it was always going to be a bad matchup because Snorlax just hard walls it, right? So... So Snorlax uh, can either be thick fat, which is going to weaken my moves, but it's pro more than likely going to be um, immunity. I knew um, immunity in team building was going to be the bi the biggest issue here, but my way around it again was going to be the Copperaja. But my my plan, my my main plan was that I can at least prevent it from. Um, if I can at least get a Toxic off on it and force it to rest, then I can take advantage of those Leap Talk turns and uh, go for 
some hits with my Kaparaja, but obviously if, if it's immunity, it's it, it's not gonna be it's gonna be difficult in that situation, but it's just something that I'm gonna have to try to feel out. But with that, I'm just gonna get straight into the matchup. Man, that is the most talking I've done about a matchup in a pretty long time, but uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Like I said, I did put a decent amount of thought into this team. I think, again, I matched up decently well. It's just a matter of having certain threats that I really didn't match up well against, right? So in team preview, I saw the gosh dang Roselia, and that scared the heck out of me. Also, I should note that uh, I obviously I made an attempt at live recording this, but uh, some things happened with uh, audio and obviously this is being done in post but um he leads off with the pilot swine and i'm furiously calculating right now and basically i'm trying to figure out if a heavy slam can ko from here and i'm trying to figure out what the rolls look like it does look like it is a roll but it's a roll that uh is does appear to be in my favor even if it's max defensive pilot swine and uh spoiler it's not max defensive pilot swine it is um some it, i i believe it was a little bit of mixed defenses but regardless this was always going to be a ko this was always going to be a ko uh for my banded um Kaparaja. but it is a crit so um that does deprive matt of a little bit of information right so i could have just gotten a really generous crit roll but um the crit never really mattered because i was banded so again he's uh it's just going to be a matter of information and he's going to be deprived a little bit of being a hundred percent certain that i am banded um it like i said it could have just been a lucky crit roll but um it wasn't in the situation but that said pilot swine was another huge 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 issue for me and getting it out of the way turn one was i mean what is gonna it was pretty huge for me right so in comes the como oh, and obviously i can't say in here um and again um my arcanine felt like the most expendable member of my team it was like a six mon and it is mainly here for, for pivoting right it's not meant to like win games it's not it's not even really meant to um mess um to really ko anything specific or check anything specific it's really just meant to get intimidated off um discourage like some massive setups and and and, and you can see i even have the roar for the curse lags uh set in particular but really it's meant to just like feel out some sets and um be a thorn in in matt's side and just kind of um pivot around like i said and give me better matchups in the end right so uh arcanine felt as good of a switch in as anything else especially when he can just drag a dance up i can nullify that attack boost with with intimidate and if it does go for the earthquake i don't think it matters a whole heck of a lot um regardless of what happens i feel like this is a reasonably no, no drawback play especially um I believe I'm just leftovers and pretty close to max defense. I think I have a little bit of uh, speed and heat for some sort of a creep, er, or to prevent some sort of creep, but I don't exactly remember. But again, um, this feels like a win to me because um, my like my role's been fulfilled. I, I, I discourage setup. That's all this Arcanine really needs to do in this particular moment, right? So part of me was thinking here that um i could go into the dragapult because whatever he would want to click on the arcanine he wouldn't necessarily want to click on the dragapult and i can potentially make some things happen here but this felt like a really free um my loaded to me here and i am really thinking about this because uh, i really don't want to take too much damage with my um my loaded because my my loaded really does have to do a decent amount of heavy lifting here it, it has to deal with a lot of physical threats um decently well and hopefully i can manage them but it's just going to be a matter of kind of leaning on my melota quite a bit in, in this matchup here but if i do get it in successfully without taking a whole heck of a lot of damage then it does give me the free flame or pop at the end of the turn and i can start to make things happen but the snorlax comes in um my first thought is just to get a tox off because again it i i know it can be immunity but i'm gonna have to test out whether whether or not it is immunity um is uh just is Especially if I try to hit it, if I need to have to hit it later on in the matchup with, with Arcanine just for some chip damage, right? It's going to be important just to know where I stand on on this thing being uh, immunity or not. It just so I, uh, it, 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 it can inform later on whether or not I would go for a Toxic uh, with my Arcanine later on in the match. Or if I just go straight out for the Roar just um, going for that. But uh, I end up, he ends up hard switching out into Roselia, and Roselia is not a mon that I thought at all about in prep. I just thought that, um, I have the tools to be able to beat this R Roselia, like, yes, it can toxic, uh, spikes me, but I wasn't the most worried about it. Um, and fun fact, so I did make a bunch of transactions to, to this team, right? I made a whole bunch of transactions. I actually don't think any of my transactions came. I believe my entire team is made up of mons that were drafted by Silver Smasher, but, um... 
ultimately, ultimately, uh, the team changes that I made left me with no removal, right? So, um, the team already didn't have the best removal options, but I think I traded away my, my one uh, chance at removal on my entire roster. So, uh, spoiler alert, I guess, after this, um, match, my Leafeon will be dropped for an Eldegoss to at least give me a nominal rapid spin on my team. I still do, uh, overall like, uh, like Eldegoss, obviously Leafeon, uh, was an absolute champion and an absolute M MVP of week one, but, uh, I needed the Eldegoss. I needed some sort of move because, um, I, I believe Matt told me that, that the only reason he, 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 he wouldn't normally hazard stack me like this, but he felt like he, like he wanted to because of this, uh, because of the way that my team looks, right? So. Anyway, I do break in the Dragapult. I try to get some damage off with the Shadow Ball. He, he's probably just gauging damage there, trying to see whether or not it was Specs or whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah, that this just shows me... A, and I was also trying to gauge damage here, but this just shows me how difficult this Rosalia is going to be to beat. And it's going to be a massive problem for me. A, 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 and also, like, there were parts of me that thought he would want to make a hard switch into the Como -O or the Clefable, because those are... The mons that um, that Dragon Bolt might, might have some issues with, but regardless, I felt like Shadow Ball was going to be the best play possible as he does get up the Toxic Spice. Now he has two layers, I believe. I believe this is the second layer, and it's ultimately just going to be problematic for me. But a uh, choice banded, a, a choice banded hit from this uh, Kaparaja is always should always take out this this Roselia. So I, I have some chip damage on it. I have what I need. Now it's just a matter of playing to what makes most sense in the situation what uh what covers the most switch outs possible what can ko roselia while also covering the most switch outs possible so i do go for the heavy slam here um and i believe this is the moment where he tries to go into the snorlax yeah so this is where you guys can see that heavy slam i i, I believe this might have been, even been heavy metal oh no i believe i i was sheer force specifically to get more damage onto the life orb uh, onto the um onto the Iron Head so that Iron Head onto Snorlax was always a really comfortable 2 KO. Um, so I believe I passed up on, on Heavy Metal, but I don't think Heavy Metal would have made the biggest of deals. I think I think it would have brought um, Heavy Slam from a 40 base power move up to like a 60, maybe 80 base power move. It, it, it ultimately wasn't the biggest of deals in this situation. But now I know, now that I know that he knows at how good of a switch in Snorlax can be to the Copper Raja. That's going to signal to me that, that the next time, and and I also tr wanted to try to try to condition Matt that he Heavy Slay might be my only way of hitting that, that Snorlax, right? So now that I know next time my Copper Raja is in and the, and the match was favorable, I can click Iron Head and I can potentially make some things happen against the Snorlax, right? So again, I can just bring in the Arcanine. This Arcanine is just meant to uh, kind of uh, pivot around for me. So I I didn't go for the turn one war because he just attacked and because um, all that happened was, was was he got some damage on me. I I do get the toxin off. I I do get the pop the immunity, which is totally fine here. Again, as long as this Arcanine can discourage him setting up then the arcanine is doing his job i don't need it to to claim any ko's i don't need it to to do anything more than just uh allow me to pivot and discourage as much setup as possible right so it's done what i can do here i i didn't even need to like do anything crazy with the roar he didn't try to rest up or uh, get any curses up so as far as as far as i'm concerned in my head it, it's a win at, at uh in this moment right so I can bring in the, the, the Malamar, and again, this Malamar can potentially win this game, right? This Malamar is very, very strong in this matchup, I felt like, against his slower threat specifically. But, uh, especially if I can bring it in on the Snorlax like I can right now, I can get the freest of superpowers off, and I can try to uh, start to make things happen, right? So, uh, whatever comes in, it, it, he either leaves out the Snorlax, and I don't think the Snorlax is going to do the most damage to me, especially once I get uh, plus one defense off of this uh, attack, but also, uh, whatever wants to come in, I don't think it's going to have the best time de de dealing with this Malamar, so I feel reasonably safe 
Obviously, the, the Clefable is going to be an issue, but um, I do pack Taunt on this Malamar specifically for the Clefable, for the Clefable because in the week one, he just set up Cosmic Towers to plus six. He didn't even really have to set up Cosmic Towers to plus six, but he did anyway. And it was um, just huge, right? Like, I just beat GB's entire team. And so you do pack uh, Taunt for that specific reason and i did run some cows on just no bulk clefable it, it, just in case it does try to set up on me and uh i believe i took one moon blast so i could always knock off i could always try to make some things kind of happen there but i felt like taunt was always going to be my best play here or no maybe i click knock off um oh no i definitely clicked on yeah i definitely clicked on and uh I, I take a big blast, feeling reasonably confident that, that I could take it, although this was going to basically triple my, my Malamar and ensure that I can't sweep from here, but he gets the KO, right? So that confirms for me that this thing pretty much has to be, um, has to be life orbed, right? So not only does it have to be life orbed, but it has to be like moderately um, invested in special attack. And this thing was really, really invested in special attack. I, th I think it might have been modest now that I think about it. I know Matt showed me his team, and I might have to fact check that, but uh, but I'm pretty positive it was really offensive. It was really offensive, and 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 I believe it might have also been set up with Hallmind as well. But um, like I was saying just a few minutes ago, this allows in my Kaparaja, and now that I know that Snorlax is a potential switch into to this, I have to click Iron Head, and I do get a crit, which um, does show me that Snorlax is a little bit more offensive than I would have thought, or maybe just more specially offensive, or just um, not as, like, I believe I, I might have cacked out, like, max defense just in case, but uh, this, th this attack with Sheer Forest and the crit um, just kind of... KOs, which was a, a surprise to me. Like I thought that it was going to be more physically bulky than than it ended up being, and I thought I was gonna like even with a crit, I was gonna have to be a two KO. But once again, because of the crit, he's not entirely sure whether or not I'm banded, and I'm sure that that's a question that he's asking himself: Am I banded? Am I sure force life orb? Am I? Well, no, I can't be life orb because I revealed it by now. But no, am I some crazy item that 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 um he hasn't considered yet, right? But uh that. That banded Iron Head again. It, it, I was not expecting it to to, to KO. I I thought it was always going to be a two KO from most from most ranges of HP, especially um especially because that Snorlax was moderately healthy. Um, I I just didn't see it coming, but it does allow the Como to come in, and it, this is pretty problematic for me. But I thinking this through a, a, a little bit, and um, it seemed like all the moves that he would go for to hit my Kaparasha was a decently solid switch in for my for my Sylveon, right? And my Sylveon is scarfed specifically for the situation. And I can try to get this KO and make my job a lot easier. Or at the very least if he switches out, um something's gonna take a, a whole heck of a lot a whole heck of a lot of damage. Maybe maybe I can even um convince him that I'm not scarfed and that I'm just trying to get in a, a solid switch in and I uh, and I'm decently physically bulky. Like maybe I have a, a Kebia berry, is it? Maybe maybe I have a Kevia berry and I can take a poison jab. Fine, I'm I'm trying to feel out those waters and 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 these are all the conditions that I'm thinking out in my head, right? Right, like if I bring in Sylveon, is it just like a dead giveaway that that I'm scarfed, or can I make him think that that, or can I bait him to to try to stay in, thinking that uh, I'm some other thing, some other set, or that I'm just physically defensive and and that I think I can take two hits no matter what happens. Um. A lot of possibilities are, are, are going through my head, right? But he does get the he does get the EQ off, and honestly, when when that EQ did as much damage as it did, I was concerned. I was very concerned that I revealed how offensive I am. But I end up clicking the hyper voice, and I completely forgot in prep about um, soundproof. I didn't I didn't completely forget that I should I, I shouldn't say that. I knew soundproof was a thing, right? But in my head, I just could not think about any other set that wasn't bulletproof right right when i think como like my first thought is bulletproof because of um how many times like a gengar has tried to shadow ball it or whatever right so i blatantly mess up here right i i was thinking uh, i i put a lot of thought into my dragapult set about man shadow ball is really spammable against this team i'm just gonna try to spam sh maybe spec shadow ball here but uh, the only reason I, I didn't bring Spec Shadow Ball actually in this matchup was because 
uh, if this combo switches in, it's gonna be bulletproof, and I'm and I'm gonna get no damage off on it, and I can't even Draco it on on the on the follow up. So that was the only reason why I switched up my my moves with or my item with my Dragapult, because I was so locked in. This has to be a, a bulletproof um uh combo to to hard counter my 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 Dragapult that in the moment in in the kind of um stress of stress of this match, I just wasn't thinking i clicked uh hyper voice and it just didn't do anything and i gave up my sylveon for absolutely nothing when it again had a really really solid matchup right like um even things like the like the just other mods on on his team like even the roselia like it could have worn down the the the, the roselia could have allowed my copperaja to start doing some things like i just don't even know what i'm what i'm doing here and i go into my dragapult to, to follow up and i'm thinking he's not gonna He's not going to stay in on just a straight up Draco. Even though, think about it, like, he very clearly could have been H Haban Barry. And I'm sure that went, that went through my mind. But, uh, I clicked Shadow Ball on a complete over prediction. I thought he was going to switch out, assuming that I would. Like, I thought that Clef was an open possibility because I could have Dracoed. Uh, into a, into a clef and put myself in a really bad spot. I at least wanted to get some damage off on the clef, but but uh, a little bit of me was was playing on tilt because of the Sylveon shit and the um and the fact that that um, Clefable was was as, as offensive as, as it is and the fact that Roselia is a big problem in my side, right? Uh, right. Like if the Roselia came in. Um, I at least wanted the option of being able to, to Shadow Ball it into a full power Draco to at least give myself a chance to, to, to KO. Uh, and it's not like I, I, I like ran any house or anything. That's just that was just like my, my intuition. I at least wanted to get more damage off on it than I otherwise would able, would be able to, right? So uh, a lot of things were going through my head in this moment, and I can bring in my Cop Raja. Uh, I was confident enough that that um that my Cop Raja was safe, but he pulls a double. And here's where it just, uh, this, this Karna comes in, and I really don't have solid answers to this Karna. Now, um, I do have a decent amount of speed into this Kaparaja, but I believe, um, yeah, no, th uh, this, th this Kaparaja should never have speed. And he knocks me off, and he finally gets his answer as to whether or not I'm sure he's banned. He was telling me, uh, after the match that he was trying to figure out all match long whether or not I was banded. But you can see, even without my ban, that is still a 2 kill, which is bananas to me. It's bananas to me. But um, at this point, I, I really don't know what to, what to play for. I'm kind of playing for differential at this point because I don't want to get 4 road. Um, especially because, ugh, man, that Sylveon was, was was a really, like, demoralizing moment for me. Um, especially because in, in my building process, I had Moonblast as my final move and I think I think I at some point right like I right like I knew that, that that he might have oh I believe it was um because of some of something that potentially got throw chop so I was scared that he might have some really hard counter to to voice move Sylveon so I thought let me have Moonblast as my like backup option, and I don't know, like maybe Moonblast could like run or uh, Hyper Voice could like run out of PP or something, like right. So like whatever. I I was gonna have Moonblast as my final slot, and then I ended up having my final slot as as Quick Attack because um, it's partially because I I was looking at Quick Attack and Quick and uninvested Quick Attack. I think even like timid Quick Attack to um to like an uninvested Como did did like all close to. 50% like it was bananas how much damage pixel quick attack was doing so I I got tempted off of just having hyper voice and moon blast which is again my my original Pete my my original uh, copy of Sylveon had both of those moves, but I changed it. I, I ended up changing it and honestly th this was the moment where I just decided I'm just gonna post calm this right like I don't uh, I don't feel like my live comment has been been good i don't i feel like i've been moderately salty i feel like i've been playing badly and i feel like i i at the very least need to like explain myself more but i but uh looking back on it like it like it probably isn't as bad as as it seems right um i don't think my prep was awful i just think um i just think i came into it i came into it um probably overconfident that, cer that certain mons of mine 
could just like take out the mods of his, right? Like I, th like I legitimately thought that the Clefable was not going to be as, as big of an issue as, as it was. Um, zero percent of me thought of, even gave a second thought to pre um, uh, Roselia, right? So, and even then, like I, like, like I guess I didn't think that Roselia was going to. Be that big of an issue. I thought it was just gonna like get up toxic spikes and and and, and get KO'd, but then I saw that Dragapult was just wasn't doing enough damage to it, and that it was probably built it to kind of take hits from from Dragapult. So, um, at some point, I just I I, I think I just felt too confident that that the six that I had could deal with the six that he had, and I think I made some mistakes. I definitely made some mistakes in team building. I definitely thought too much about what he brought in week one and thought that uh, he thought he would think that those were viable against me. Here, like again, the Sticky Web's Vicavolt, I think, was a big one. Like, I built an entire Kaparaja around that when being able to switch up moves probably would have been pretty huge in this matchup. And I don't know. It was just, it, it was just a little bit of a mess, I think. Um,. I did kind of overthink things with my with my max speed Kaparaja. Oh, and fun fact, he he actually had a uh, just enough, I, I believe, like twelve or twenty uh, EVs into speed on Clefable to outspeed max speed Adamant Kaparaja, which I'm pretty positive was 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 just an accident. I don't think he meant to um, outspeed always outspeed max speed Adamant Kaparaja, but uh, he ended up doing it right because 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 max speed. Adamant Kaparaja hits 82, which I felt confident in, um, because n n no speed clefable is like 80 speed, right? So I felt reasonably confident that I could catch him off guard. Like maybe he only puts like 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 the four extra EVs in, in, in into speed, or, or, or doesn't think about it much, and just just has like max defense or something, right? Um, and I could catch him off guard with a max speed Kaparaja that that sneaks up there at that 82 mark. And uh, he and he just haven't hit 83 speeds, so Copperage was never ever really a solid answer to the Clefable. Um, and yeah, a a after the match, he told me that um, that the matchup was was definitely in his favor, and I kind of disagree because I honestly think that my team matched up really well against his team. But uh, at at the end of the day, I really did not have any solid answers to Clefable, and obviously, I I just had to play better. Like part of it was just literally playing better like i like i couldn't afford i couldn't afford to give up my sylveon my scarf sylveon which is meant to deal damage to a lot of his mons um on a dumb on a dumb soundproof choke right so that's gonna be week week two it was a lot of fun i wish i had built with a few different things in mind and i wish i had uh like i said just just played better like i can't i could not tell you how silly i felt when i Clicked hyper voice and I saw the soundproof text go off like like that's a really shitty feeling moment like it doesn't feel good to make a play like that but it's what happened in this week and like I said I don't think any I don't think anything that I brought was that terrible but uh it was very ill suited to the six that he brought he, he also just brought some things that I could not have expected in in any build process that i thought right like i did not see the roselia coming even if it could set up toxic spikes and leave without me having removal right i didn't think that he would value toxic spikes that much to bring a gosh dying roselia against a team that could probably deal with it at, i mean at, at the very least i could come in with a dang he crashing uh he crashing Kabraja, but i don't know that's gonna be week two matt definitely outbuilt me he for sure out outplayed me like if, if anything he didn't hit like three different moves into into mons that, that, that were immune to them because of their abilities right so that immediately puts him at like miles ahead of me right so uh like i said that's gonna be it for me um we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of uh the ncp as well as uh the ubl playoffs will be coming off really really soon and more weeks of the ap academy but once again with that thank you guys so much for watching I'll be once again out.